shrimp. You want that chain back? Meet me out front and take it. Check, check, check. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Huh? See, half of y'all is half as nice. The others like to sacrifice. I'm passionately passion passion so I can get the pastor's price. Fuck is you gonna do when I'm coming through? Check this out. Salute to the Battle Academy first and foremost. Salute to my guy Showtime SP. I want to talk to y'all about this card, Respect the Shooter. I'm just going to um, go through the whole card, give you my winners, my losers. Um, I, I did it in a live stream, but I want to break down every single round that I've sketched about in order to break things down and talk about them the way they really need to be talked about. Um, put things into perspective for people who haven't really got to either watch the pay-per-view or order it. You can order the pay-per-view. And I will just give you my whole everything, you know what I'm saying? We'll just leave it all out here. And um, it is what it is. So, there's positives, there's negatives. You know, I'm be honest with you. There are some positives, there are some negatives. Some of these battles on this card were not promoted as one-round battles. Um, when you have battles that are not being promoted as one-round battles, and come on, Battle Academy, you guys went on a media tour. Everybody, y'all had this promotion going for damn near two, three months. Everybody was talking about this car. You couldn't find a media outlet that was not talking about this car. So y'all had more than enough opportunity to get the word out on which battles were one rounders versus which ones were not. So that's first of all, that type of shit is whack. I'm gonna be honest with you, it was whack. There was battles that we expected to be three rounds and they were only one. Uh, Chef Trez versus Snake Eyes, one round battle. Jack Boy Main versus Dre Dennis, one round battle. Uh, Prophet versus Prep was a one, but Prep destroyed him so bad that it didn't even have to be nothing more than that. Uh, and the first battle, the Bree Woods versus the Hair, you could just take that off the card. That didn't even get them get that off the card. But um, let's get into it. So the first battle of the night, you know what I'm saying, it, it just sound, I don't know if they was freestyling, I don't know what it was, but Bree Woods, and I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to just, we're going to just, we're not even going to talk about that. Uh, Jack Boy Main versus Dre Dennis, though. We will talk about Jack Boy Main versus Dre Dennis. So Jack Boy Main has obviously been getting a lot of scrutiny for his battles that he's had. Um, started with John, John, and Don, then went to a uh, franchise, and now he's in this battle right here. He's been having a down year. It's no secret. I hope that he will come into this battle and bring his A game. I tweeted it earlier today, and you know, some people I tweeted it earlier the day of the battle. You know what I'm saying? I even um, I, I I had a lot of admiration. I was like, yo, I hope Jack Boy does his thing because Jack Boy is entertaining. Jack Boy man could talk his shit. He does good promotion. And um, speaking of promotion, RiceGangMyShopify.com. Log on. We got the Mike Tyson punch out thing in there. You hear me? And I got the pink joint that rock war inside the uh. Rex battle, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. So, um, I was hoping that Jack Boy Main could come back into his form and do what he normally does when he was, you know, doing his thing. So, he gets into a round and he has some good material. He has some moments in there. He had the bop it bar. He was, you know what I'm saying? He was Jack Boy Main that I expected him to be. Um, his round was only about four or five minutes and, um, it was good material, I ain't gonna lie, but he went first, and Dre Dennis went, and Dre Dennis' round was like 10, 15 minutes long. So he had double the material that Jack Boy had. And um, you know, word is, Jack is, word is that he's saying that they agreed to four minutes, but Dre Dennis rapped 10, 15 minutes, but Dre Dennis is gonna get the win by default because he had way more material, and he was wigging. And if that's the case, if I agree to rap four minutes with somebody or five minutes and they get into the nine, 10, 11 minute mark, I'm gonna stop it. That's just me. I'm going I'm, nah, I'm not letting a nigga get that off of me. Hell no, because you're overcompensating the round. And I don't know what the contract said. I, I'm just hearing what I heard and it is what it is. So, Profit versus Prep. Um, prep, he wild out on Profit. Prison Prep. Um, profit. He, he revealed that Prophet is the CEO in his round, like correctional officer. He even said the name of the jail that he works at. And it wasn't just good, good, good juju. Like when you're in a Philly crowd full of like, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of niggas that done been to jail or done dealt with diff different trials and tribulations in their life. When they hear that a nigga that's on stage battling was a CEO or is a CEO, you already know the crowd is like, ah, I ain't trying to hear that shit. And I know people's gonna say like, oh, Rick Ross was 
revealed as a CEO. Yeah, Rick Ross was revealed to be a CEO, but that was after he was already a platinum artist, after he already sold millions of records, after he had a huge fan base. And once you get a huge fan base, it's really hard to remove it. I've said the only things that can really remove somebody's huge fan base, and really these things don't even do it. Something that has to do with rape, or something that has to do with children, and then you see people like R. Kelly, they still got a huge fan base, even with that. But for most folks, something like that can pretty much get you, you can jersey your fucking career. For most people. But um, he revealed that he was a CEO, and that uh, kind of like took that battle out of here. K. Walker vs. J. 400. J. 400 wasn't even there. Word on the street is, you know, he um, tore his ankle. I don't know if he tore something. I know he hurt himself playing basketball. Nigga, you an old nigga. You shouldn't be even be out there, nigga. Like, for real, dog. You ain't the littlest nigga of all. Like, I'm like 240-something. I'm not finna be out there. And I'm in pretty good shape. But I ain't finna be out there running and down and all that. Nah, fuck all that. I ain't trying to get hurt. But anyway, hope he gets better soon. But K. Walker still spit his round. Like, spitting his round. And I was looking like, yo, who is he battling? Because I was putting on my Christmas tree at the same time. Because some of these intermissions between these battles... Uh-uh, too long. One battle had like a fucking 30 minute intermission. Uh-uh, cut that shit. Put that in rice. Y'all ain't done enough to have no 30 minute intermissions. And then, when they had the intermissions, they had some nigga up there, I don't even know what song he was singing or what. All I know is this nigga had a bulletproof vest and I just cut them, cut them, put the shit on you. I ain't even hear the shit, but it was the same video over and over and over again. Cut that shit. Um. So K. Walker still spits his round. J400 wins. If you don't show up and a nigga still spits their round to nobody, the other person wins. It is what it is. Um, Chef Trez versus Snake Eyes. Uh, Chef Trez came out in his first round. He had a very energetic round. He had some. He had some good material in his round. Uh, he had some quotable bars. He had a lot of a lot of good pack, action packed material in his round. Uh, he said something to, 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 to Snake Eyes to the effect of, you let Rex start banging yesterday, ain't no respect for that. If Rock started claiming blood tomorrow, he would get checked for that. You know how he'd be rapping all fast and shit like that. Um, it, went, it, went, it went pretty well. Um, Chef Trez's round was fire. Um, Snake Eyes comes out into his round after Chef Trez had a pretty good round. Like, he had some highlight moments in there. He got a lot of crowd reaction. The Philly crowd was fucking with Trez. And the one thing I will say about Trez is Trez is well-traveled. Like, he battles a lot of different places. You'll see him in different states, like, every week. So he's known to have love in all types of places. He done battle at a lot of goddamn leagues to the point where Chef Trez is he's easily a household name when it comes to what he does. So Snake Eyes comes out in his round and it's a lot of aggression i'm not gonna lie it's a lot of aggression you know what i'm saying he uh, he has some presence but the bars like the the material is not really it ain't really like right like crazy like that you know what i'm saying like the 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 the, the, the fucking the intellectual thoughts in the rhyming process is not really like that you know what i'm saying and no disrespect to him or no disrespect to anybody but the writing level is level like Chef Trez's writing level was way above his. Like even with the battle that he had with Mike P, like he had a couple moments in it here and there. But the writing level is when you're dealing with this type of when you at this level right here, everything is gonna come to the surface. Like it's not just you could rap about you've been the hardest nigga. I did the most time and all of that. That should be cool. But when it comes to the levels of writing. They will. They usually will surpass each other, and until he really starts, he did. He did good versus Ace. I mean, um, but when you're rapping against somebody like Trez, who got a lot of different moments, a lot of ways to break you down, a lot of different snake flips, he's able to like. And if he would have went second, he would have rebuttaled your shit too. But he didn't go second. He went first. And I got a. I got um. Snake Eyes. Oh, but one thing I will say about Snake Eyes, he does have super big moments. He was able to bring Briz Rothstein out of the witness protection program. Like he brought, I don't know how he got Briz to come back, but uh, he said some shit like, "My squad ain't know no pussy shit." Getting knocked out of events, not a whole culture gotta look for Briz. Like that is the type of moments that Snake Eyes be having. Mad people don't call Briz out. I think niggas in the, in the event that battled in other battles called uh, called Briz out. 
But when Snake Eyes dig, this nigga Briz comes down from the motherfucking top roll. He comes down the stairs and they opening up the crowd, parting the crowd like the Red Sea. This nigga gets on stage. Say that shit now. Say that shit now. Fuck's he talking about? Fuck he talking about? It got hype. Definitely the moment of the night. That 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 moment right there. Well, it was one of the moments of the night. That was one of the. If there was a top three moments of the night, that was definitely one of the top three moments of the night. Briz Rothstein coming out, um, back on stage, standing on stage, dressed in all black, looking like fucking um, the Undertaker in Survivor Series 1996, like I aforementioned in another blog. But um, I got. Chef Trez winning that battle 1-0. If it would have been a three round battle, that might have been a little bit better. But uh, overall, I got a fucking um, Chef Trez winning. Enes versus Franchise. Uh, what I will say about Enes, Enes in Philly is like Skip to my Lou at the Rucker. Like, they love this motherfucker. Oh my God. Enes was, he had some shit. I'm not going to hold you. Enes had some bars like he was wilding on franchise in the first round franchise first round was it was straight he didn't have it wasn't bad but it i gave enes the first round second and third round is gonna be the biggest debate i got franchise winning the second round i picked franchise 2-1 off the first watch but this is a really debatable battle and i wouldn't be mad if people have enes winning that because enes did his motherfucking thing in philly Enes' third round was fire too. I felt his best round was his first. His second round was cool. His third was his second best round. Uh, for Franchise, I felt like his second was his best round. His third was good too, and the first was not that bad. But uh, it, they kind of like went in different orders of their best rounds. That's just how I looked at it from a material perspective. Um, Bill Collector versus Av. Bill Collector, I'm gonna just be honest with you, in this battle, he did good. Bill Collector did good. But to punch with Av, like like he was punching, but to punch with Av is a different story. You know what I'm saying? Like the, Av is one of the most consistent punches of our generation. You got B Magic still around. He had a good performance the other night too. B Magic, uh, Rum Nitty, Av, you know, as far as punches, is in all in like the same sentence. But I think Rum Nitty is probably the best puncher that we got going right now. And Av is like a really close second. I mean, Av punches at a very high fucking rate. And Bill Collector tried to punch with Av a little bit, but Av's level of pin is uh, is on a different fucking level. I had Av clearly went in the first. Uh, the, the second, Av was punching back to back to back to back again. I know I had Bill Collector winning the third. And I tell you that I know I had Bill Collector because I like the Bill Collector. He starts getting into his personal shit. When my not got when my not got promoted, I got demoted. Blood smearing off, vodka moment. Uh, cave, I put boots on the cave. I'm hiking on it. Like Bill Collector had really good, powerful, impactful lines in his third. So I had Bill slightly edging the third, but I had Ab winning the first and second. Like. Uh, first clear, second was pretty clear. The third, I had Av, um, Bill Collector winning the third. But I thought Bill Collector was getting 30. So, I mean, I told him. That's my man. Like, he, he actually called me the other day. I need to call Bill back. But uh, i just been so busy with these recaps and working and family. Like, it just be so much. So, um, you know, I, I, I just, uh, I had Bill Collector doing good. Better than a lot of people would have expected him to do. But I definitely have Av. Av punch way too fucking much. He said, uh, he said something about uh, I get Bill cartooned up. I get Bill cartooned up like Fat Albert, like you know, like Bill cartooned. It was fuck. He was fucking wilding on him. He said something like uh, uh, Bucks. I put Bucks on Bill. Now the payments ain't due. Like oh my, he was not a payments. It's like the bill updated. I put Bucks on. Bill, not a bill up. You know how he be doing that shit. I was punching out of fucking control. Um, Tay Rock versus T Rex. No notes. Um, I know a lot of people have their own opinion of how they felt about this battle going into it. Um, I honestly felt like 
the promotion was going to supersede the battle. And when you watch the battle, it did. Um, overall, the battle was good. Not great, but it was good. Um, I liked it. It was. I was entertained by it. I did watch it. I was entertained by it. I watched it um, when it happened. I watched it again that same night, and I watched it today. So I've seen it three times, and I've got a good perspective on how I feel about it. Um, to be honest with you, uh, Tay Rock went first. Um, in the beginning of his round, it took him a little bit, a, a little second to heat up, heat up, heat up. He had some lines in his first round that I personally would have, wouldn't have went with. But I'm not the battle rapper. I'm just a nigga recapping it. You know what I'm saying? Um, First of all, salute to him. He did have the pink Rice Gang um, camera and sweater on, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do respect him for rocking that. Um, he did rock another one versus Shotgun Shug. Um, he didn't get that battle. It is what it is. But he did wear one in this one. Um, and he had some lines, like he said, uh, something like, uh, I, 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 I snap your wrist back and then take till it till the shit snap. Then I break me off a piece that's a Kit Kat. Small round, tic tac, like that. That's just to me, it's just a real subsidiary level of writing, and I feel like he's above that as far as like where his pen is at. And this is just me looking at it from a positive. I'll bring the, you know, what I'm saying, I'll bring the negative, then I'll bring the positive, and then we'll just um, end it from there. So he has something like that, but then he started to heat up, and he has some moments. He has some very, very, very impactful moments that were some of the biggest moments of this battle. Uh, he had a line where he said, you want your chain back, meet me outside and take this shit. Like, when he said that, niggas was, wow. Then he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, oh, 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 he said, um, oh, he said, this is when he started wilding. He said, oh, he said, oh, he said, I'll dent your grill. You'll have an awkward speech for doctors to fix it up. It's gonna cost a lot. Who said talk is cheap? He said something like that, like like to fix your grill is gonna cost a lot. Who said talk is cheap? And then um, he got into the most impactful moment of the whole battle when he said, "You said the nigga that got your chain is dead. That is a lie. The nigga that got your chain is in front of you, and he is alive." <laughs> You said the nigga that took your chain is dead. That is a lie. The nigga that took your chain is standing in front of you and he is alive. I am alive. Like, although that's not no super duper lyrical shit, it was very impactful. And I see people saying like Rock was about to choke, was about to stumble. Like Rex was talking all through his round. Like I said, like I knew he was gonna do. He was talking all through his round. Snickering, talking, turned his back on him. Typical Rex shit. Just, you know, just Rex being Rex. Talk through his round. Typical Rex shit. Um, Rock ended his round. Um, good round. Like, he had some good material towards the end of his round. Rex gets into his round. And, um, like, I didn't know what direction he was really going in. He started with the grown man bars, something you got to deal with. And, then, you know, he, he went through his material. Um, he had a dope line about, uh, like, like, he said some shit like, um, they don't understand, he's like, niggas don't understand, Rex, you ain't gonna touch me, I quit my basketball team over a hand check, like, I like that shit, and then he said another line about, uh, he said, he said, you know, that Geechee Gotti, uh, Geechee Gotti was, was, was wilding on you, and it's a crit, but how it look for dude? He said, but imagine these lines coming from a nigga that really hooked on your crew or something like that. That was fire, because he was like saying, like, Ichi Gotti was saying it, but nigga, we really bopped on y'all, so imagine them lines coming from me. I like that shit. Um, but throughout Rex Round, like, he just, it just, the crowd too, like, let me, let me not even do that. I don't even want to do that shit. The crowd was on some bullshit. Like when Rex was talking, like rapping, like niggas was talking through his round, the crowd was heckling him and shit like that. So if he really didn't get a fair shake for whatever reason, like the Philly crowd was not really giving him a fair shake. But with that being said, I've been, we've been doing this, a lot of us that do this right here at this level been doing this so long that even if a nigga's not getting a fair shake, you could still see through the smoke and mirrors and tell if somebody won or lost. And, um, 
I got Rock winning this battle pretty goddamn clearly. Them two moments that he had, meet me back outside and take the shit, and I am alive was bigger than Rex whole round. Like, I don't understand what the argument is. Like, there really is no argument here. Like, I don't understand. And that's why is I don't do, I do what I do for my fans, my people who watch my content. I'm not going back and forth with nobody. I'm not arguing about you. Whatever you think is what you think, and you can do that. But if you ask me, I got Rock winning this battle pretty clear. Overall, <sighs> event mm, seven, but Briz came back, so 7.5 is about the highest I would go. Um, Ad vs. Bill Collector was a good battle. Uh, Chef Trez vs. Snake Eyes was a good battle, but it was only a one rounder. Uh, Dre Dennis vs. Jack Boy would have been way better as three rounds. Uh, I probably would have gave this card an eight or eight and a half, but I gotta take back points because it's like, man, y'all are fucking selling three round, one round battles for a three round price. And it's the same shit that happened with John John and them on, on Bullpen, but they produced a Tay Rock versus bad news and they produce Briz versus Loso. None of those one round battles are gonna give me that. I mean if you want to count Briz coming back as a big moment I guess but other than that no. So that's how I got it. That's how I call it. You know what I'm saying? Showtime SP will probably be through it the next day or so. He'll give his opinion on certain things but that's my second watch recap. I truly appreciate all of y'all for checking out this content. Once again, RiceGame.myshopify.com. Log on.